as one considers that the source consciousness which animates all things manifests as both predator and prey. Whatever is within one's nature to do is within the nature of God to carry out. Aleister Crowley wrote, Every man and every woman is a star. There is no sin in any action which is in accordance with one's will and desire. Every soul is a manifestation of the one, the one which is divided for love's sake and for the pleasure and pain of unique existence. The life of an individual is of no consequence, the source consciousness alone exists, experiencing the pleasure and torment of each life. Concerning Human Sacrifice IT has often erroneously been believed that Satanists perform human sacrifices and other criminal acts such as molesting children or torturing animals. While this is rarely the case due to the obvious danger that such acts entail, anyone who has studied the nature of magic will understand the rationale behind such deviant practices. The magician who engages in this sort of activity is not a common sociopath or child molester who derives pleasure from torturing or killing an innocent victim. Rather, the magician in question draws on magical energy released by the emotionally charged victim and directs that energy to affect the world in some way. Aside from the legal dangers, the level of energy raised by such a ritual is too great for any but the most powerful wizard, or group of wizards, to control. It is all too common to hear Satanists say things like a Satanist would never kill a living creature. These statements, made by those who want to promote a positive image of Satanism, are clearly erroneous and are based on a Christian morality. It would be much more satanic to admit that magical power can be raised through human sacrifice and used to enhance the power of a destruction ritual but the legal dangers of killing another human being outweigh the added benefit the sacrifice would add to the ritual. This statement attaches no moral or ethical implications to the murder of another human being. If you kill for your country you are called a hero. But if you kill someone who has wronged you then you are called a criminal. Satanists are superior. The masses exist to serve. The life of one Satanist is worth the lives of a hundred thousand men. Deus. The purpose of this thesis is to elucidate upon the meaning and significance of the word of the Eon of Lucifer, Deus, and the law of the Eon of Lucifer, Philema. Zephyr, Deosaur will to come into being as a god. In so doing, I will also discuss the demonic Bible, the system of magic revealed to me by my unholy guardian demon, the spirit Ezeel, and the embassy of Lucifer, the vehicle for the advancement of Deus as the word of the Eon of Lucifer. This thesis may, therefore, serve as a commentary on the demonic Bible as well as an exposition on Dedic philosophy and Mott. Near the end of the demonic Bible is an invocation entitled the General Invocation for calling any of the spirits and a listing of the archetypal devils, demons, and dark gods I have invoked using this formula. The wording of the invocation is not important and sigils, or seals, for the spirits are not necessary. A name when written is a word composed of letters each signifying a sound. The syllables and sounds which make up a name identify a particular being which religion, metaphysics, mythology, demonology, folklore, or legend has said to exist. Each name represents a unique archetypal being which the magician may identify himself with, bringing about various changes within his psyche. Even where different names have been given to the same archetypal being or where one name is derived from another, each name is a unique creation. Some of the archetypes may be similar in nature and others may be wildly different, but each is unique. Asmodi, Asmode, and Asmodeus, Asteret, Astereth, Astart, and Ishtar, Satan, Shaitan, Shiva, and Set are each unique archetypal forms. The archetypal spheres and archetypal spirits I have described thus far exist, subjectively, because man has defined them to exist. 
Some will argue that these gods and demons are real beings who have revealed their existence in the past and that the knowledge of these beings together with the knowledge of the astral planes on which they dwell has been passed down in religion and mythology. It is more likely, however, that these beings take on an apparent existence because people believe in them. The psychologist Carl Jung, fascinated with metaphysics, alchemy, and dream interpretation, considered that gods and demons existed as symbolic forms in the subconscious mind. Further, he suggested that there was a collective subconscious shared by all humanity and that symbols in dreams had universal meanings. With this in mind, the spheres described in the map of the spheres may be seen as planes of consciousness on each of which the symbols share a common theme. The map of the spheres shows the ionic sphere as being beyond the heavenly spheres. The ionic sphere could be described as a circle surrounding all of the spheres, since it is closest to the universal subconscious. Traditionally, a magician begins as a novice or neophyte and over time becomes an adept. The adept continues to advance in knowledge and eventually becomes a magister templi, or master of the temple. This process is called initiation and, in magical orders, is marked by various membership degrees and the performance of rituals or ceremonies intended to signify that the magician has entered a new stage in his career. The magister templi may ultimately cross the abyss come face to face with his true self or holy guardian angel, and become a magus. The magus speaks a word which creates a new eon or changes an existing eon, and establishes a law. It may be more accurate, but less poetic, however, to say that the magician views the tide currents of the ionic sphere and codifies what he sees as a trend or theme into a particular word or magical dictum. In truth, all eons are one eon, they differ, as waves of an ocean. The ocean in this analogy is the universal subconscious ellipsis points the source consciousness from which conscious thought arises. The eons affect all humanity, since they exist in the universal subconscious. Like waves of the ocean, each eon causes new eons to form. We may speak of a particular cycle in which many eons come into existence. The ocean of the universal subconscious has tide currents of its own. When the tide is coming in the cycle is one of restriction, and when the tide is going out the cycle is one of expansion. The number and frequency of ionic words is greater near the start of a cycle, because of the change in the current from one of restriction to one of expansion. It is for this reason that the Ian of Horus, Ian of Set, and Ian of Lucifer have followed so quickly one upon another. All of these Ians have the same theme and are part of the cycle of expansion which began in 1904 set. The difference is that each Ian builds upon the previous Ians. We may see the creation of a new Ian within the next decade but eventually the current of the cycle will be entirely one of expansion no longer affected by the past cycle of restriction. When this is the case, centuries will pass between new ionic words. In another 2000 year, the cycle of expansion will have ended and humanity will experience another cycle of restriction. Aleister Crowley made reference to the Eon of Isis, a time when man lived in harmony with the natural world and the dominant religions involved the worship of nature.